Well, welcome to this week's assembly. I'm going to speak for about the same length of time that it takes to put some water in the kettle and boil it, make a nice cup of tea. Why not put the kettle on now? But let me start by asking you this question. Is my glass half empty or half full? Being satisfied with what we have, whatever that might look like, is to be content. Contentment is perhaps something that we might all be thinking about in one way or another a little bit more at the moment. The challenges that so many of us are facing that we haven't needed to face before. Poor health, job insecurity, that contact with friends or family that we so desperately want but can't have. These can be really hard things. It can also be easy in our culture of relative plenty to think that the secret of contentment is to have more experience or more stuff. If we just had this or that, we would be happy. It would be better, we could think. We might look at ourselves and compare ourselves to others. It's so easy to do. We've got so much, and yet we're never quite content. Philippians is a book in the New Testament written by a man called Paul. He wrote in chapter four of the book, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Now, Paul is no theologian writing from a luxurious study, surrounded by servants who keep him well-fed and polish his silver collection. He's writing from prison. He's not sure if he'll even live or die. And he knows only too well what it is to be beaten, thirsty, hungry and hated. On the face of it, Paul has every right to be rather annoyed at his circumstances. And yet, he writes, perhaps incredibly, that he is content with this. Even more strongly than that, elsewhere he writes he is joyful in all circumstances. All that Paul writes makes me ask, how is that possible? What is it that enables this man who has nothing and yet says he has everything, is full of joy and totally at peace, who is completely content? And as if anticipating that question, Paul continues, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Paul wants to tell others that he's discovered that stripped of this comfort, his comfort or his freedom, when he trusts in Jesus Christ, he has everything. It's not that his circumstances are in any way enjoyable or bring him pleasure, but that even in the midst of terrible hardship, Jesus provides the contentment needed. I suppose that like Paul, we can look at his circumstances and realise that he simply isn't in control and fear for the future. Instead, Paul looks at his difficulties. He realises he doesn't need to know the future or to be in control of it because he trusts that Christ does know and is in control. And with that knowledge, and no doubt needing to remind himself regularly of it, Paul is completely content. Thank you very much for listening. Enjoy your cover.